Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dog on Positive Way, where we are talking about the reactive dog and what to do, what not to do, um, what uh, trainers, what training techniques to use, and what training techniques not to use, things to stay away from. So as I'm going through getting ready for this week's pod, I uh, was doing some research on something else, and then I got sidetracked somewhere else, and I went down a little dark not a dark tunnel, but I went down a little rabbit hole in the news stories on uh, Bay News 9 over in Tampa Bay. And uh, a story that came up uh, last month that uh, a little boy, he was very cute, such a cute little boy, Noah, up in Pasco County, got attacked by a neighbor's dog. He was not anywhere near the dog. Um, he was playing on his bike in his own yard. Um, and this dog got out of the house and escaped and ran down the block and attacked Noah. Um, bit him in the head and crushed his skull in two places. And he had to have brain surgery. And um, he's still in the hospital. So um, I'm going to play this video. And then there's another dog attack um, at a dog park. So let me go back here. All right, guys. The family of a two-year-old boy from Pasco County says he is fighting for his life tonight. It's one of two dog attacks within a week of each other. Another attack left a woman and her dog wounded weeks after moving to St. Pete. Tonight, 10 Tampa Bay's Miguel Octavio shares their call for accountability. He's a very thriving <laughs> two-year-old child. Two-year-old Noah's life changed in an instant last Thursday. The dog had fractured his skull. Medics flew him from Hudson to the hospital. His family says a dog mauled him in the family's front yard. His grandmother, Marlene Bernier. It's not fair for anyone to be bitten by a dog, let alone an uh, innocent baby. His family urging prayers and donations for his GoFundMe. Nearby, another dog attack reported at Crescent Lake Park Monday. Catherine Cooper says it left her and her dog, Stephen, with physical and emotional wounds. You know, I'm just so glad that he's still with us. You know, I just, it, it lost him. You know, I was the one that took him to that park. Bite marks on her face and neck, her arm wrapped up in a bandage. She says Stephen could have died. And it has been immensely traumatic. The attacking dog was under foster care, according to Animal Services. The organization Fluff Animal Rescue owns the dog. In a statement, its president wrote in part, a house guest, not the foster parent, walked the dog, unaware the dog requires special care and escaped her collar. She adds the dog has had no other incidents of aggression since being under their care. But Cooper, who previously fostered dogs, says she wants the dog to be surrendered. This has to be a lesson that's learned. And, and honestly, if nothing changes, that dog is going to kill someone. Those we spoke with hope their stories can be a warning for dog owners. You should protect not only your pet, but your community that you live in as well. In St. Pete, Miguel Octavio, 10 Tampa Bay. Fluff Animal Rescue told us the dog is under quarantine and they are working with authorities. The organization wrote back in part, it would never knowingly place an aggressive animal into a foster or forever home. Wow. Okay, so let's make sure no, nothing else is in the store. So, um, I mean, a few things. This little kid was attacked by a dog that was in his neighborhood. Apparently, this dog has some previous bites, um, which I'm not surprised. I always say behavior doesn't happen in a vacuum, meaning it's never just as, oh, all of a sudden this one incident that happens. There's a buildup. There's usually previous incidents that happened. Um, I uh, sent an email to the Pasco County Sheriff Department to find out more information about um you know what happened with the dog uh the dog's owners the dog was killed the um uh guardian of noah shot the dog um to protect noah to save his life so it's all very tragic for everybody involved um especially noah um so and I'm talking about this story today and 
the next story about the dog park um, <clears throat> incident because not because it's sensationalized and all that junk, but because it is so imperative for you who is a dog owner of a reactive dog takes all the precautions that you can. And what I mean by precautions is if your dog is a door darter, teach your dog a boundary at the door, sit, stay. You can do that. Do it while your dog's on leash. Don't do it with them off leash. Set yourself and your dog up to be successful. This way, when the door opens, your dog doesn't dart out the door. This is super important. Got to communicate to your dog to stay. More importantly than that, I mean, if this dog had uh, previous bite issues, <clears throat> apparently uh, from one article that I read yesterday, he um, um, has attacked and killed neighborhood animals. So I'm assuming cats. Um, nothing was mentioned about other dogs or biting other humans, but I suspect it's happened. So I'm waiting to hear back. I put in a request for the records of the dog bite from the uh, Pasco County Sheriff. So I'm waiting to hear back from them and I am definitely going to update you on everything, the progress of Noah. Um, and is there going to be, they talk about accountability in this uh, news story. Um, and is there going to be uh, any charge or any charges going to be brought against the dog owner? Um, and I really think the dog owner should face charges because if you knowingly have an aggressive dog and you're not careful and your dog's not muzzled and you haven't done training and your dog is a dangerous dog, this dog is a dangerous dog. This dog would have killed this child if the parent or guardian didn't step in and shoot him. Um, and <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> the liability, like if they own their house, Noah's guardians can sue them. They could sue them anyway, um, even if they don't own their house. But I guess my point is, is like, if you own your house and you have a dog that's aggressive and you're not careful and that dog gets out and attacks somebody, guess who's liable? Even if you're walking your dog on a leash and your dog attacks somebody, guess who's liable? Guess who's going to get sued? You are. You're going to get sued. And if you own your house and you own, you know, you've got some money or whatever, they're going to come for you. And there are so many attorneys out there. When I was doing research on this article and I was looking for an update, but it's because it's been about two weeks since this uh, news story came out. And I haven't seen anything yet. I'm sure there's going to be uh, an update uh, soon. But so it's two-year-old gets uh, attacked by dog. Two-year-old gets attacked by dog, Pasco County. And then underneath that is attorney, this attorney, this lawyer, dog bite, case, ba 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 ba. And it's like... <laughs> The lawyers are just out there like, yes, we're going to make you money. We're going to sue the people. We're going for it. Um, so I don't know if, what the history is of the dog bite. So I'm hoping to find that out. So let's fast forward to, um, <clears throat> oh, and just so you know, Noah's in the hospital. He's had surgeries. Um, and. Um, I, again, it's been a couple of weeks, but they gave him 72 hours and they had to do another surgery. Then they gave him another 72 hours. Um, so again, not hearing anything is good. No news is good news. I, I'm sure if anything changed uh, for the worse, we would have definitely heard about it. And it would have come up in my searches yesterday. Um, so let's fast forward to the dog park dog attack. I hate dog parks, and I know some of you are going to be like, oh, why do you hate dog parks? And, you know, it's a great place and a great way to socialize your dog. No, it's not. It's absolutely the worst freaking way you can 
socialize your dog. Why? Why is it the worst way? Because you have no control over your environment. You have no control over the other dogs. You have control over your dog, hopefully, but when you go into the dog park, you're not going to leave your dog on leash. So unless you have amazing off-leash um, control over your dog, you have no control over your dog. Control over your dog when you're in public is, they call it, what do they call it? Care, custody, and control. So the care and the custody, they're under your care. You've got them on a leash, your custody, it's you. And control, you, dive the, you have the dog on the leash. You have total control over your dog. Your dog is not going to get away from you. Your dog cannot slip its lead, whatever. It can't. You're, you're solid, right? That's not what happens in these dog parks or around them or in most situations. I mean, look at the previous uh, news clip that we just talked about. So this poor woman, I feel so bad for her and her dog. I mean, you know, now the dog is going to have behavioral issues if the dog was never say the dog was never had uh, never had any bad incidences with another dog um was is not aggressive is friendly and she goes to the dog park and the dog gets attacked by some dog guess what is probably going to happen to steve steve is going to probably have some behavioral issues creep up and maybe fear maybe some fear some aggression maybe a combination i think most aggression is based off of fear um but um <clears throat> so and i mean the poor woman she got bit in the face how terrifying is that now steven is a smaller dog so hopefully she was in the smaller dog park area that's the other thing with the dog parks you have all these um not all these you have usually two different areas you have a large dog area and a small dog area i cannot tell you how many times freaking small dog people come into the large dog area or vice versa it's like do you not read the rules of the park they're clearly stated any dog park has clearly stated rules before you go in <clears throat> and it's just bullshit that People are just like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. The rules don't apply to me. And then that happens to that woman and her dog, which is really horrible. Um, you know, what about her fears and, and her, her medical bills or, you know, any, God, there's so many different things that could go on that, you know, emotionally, that she could be traumatized emotionally, you know, it's like, is she going to develop a fear of, you know, whatever dog size, breed, whatever mix bit her dog. So there's a lot to take into consideration. Now, okay, you heard the dog that attacked her and her dog, Steven, is owned by a rescue group. I have volunteered and still volunteer currently. <clears throat> for many rescue groups and shelters in the past. I, I don't volunteer for any shelters right now. Um, but I cannot tell you how many times I've screened dogs that are aggressive. And I'm not talking about like some low level stuff. I'm not talking about, um, you know, maybe they're, maybe they're a little resource guardy. You know, maybe they're a little, mm, you know, around their food bowl. And can you work with stuff like that? And what can happen? I'm talking about dogs like the dog that attacked Stephen and his owner in a dog park. Um, I mean, here's the thing. Here's my biggest argument with any rescue group, organization, or person. It doesn't even have to be a rescue group. I'm not coming after rescue groups or shelters or anything. I'm just, it's just people, okay? We're all just people. We're really trying to save these animals that have been given up by a previous owner for one reason or another. It's Sometimes it's like, ah, it's a mess, it's behavioral, and sometimes it's not. They just, you know, they can't keep the dog, and the dog's fine, and that's not the case um, a lot of times. So you get a dog that the rescue group really shouldn't have, 
and shouldn't um, adopt out because one of the things that the uh, newscaster said uh, was something along the lines that um, the dog was under foster care and the person who walked him or her didn't know that the dog had any issues at all. So I read, I always read between the lines, especially with, oh, there's a little net, especially with um, aggression and fear to um, read between the lines of one person, whoever the foster parent is, is the one who knows that this dog has issues, okay? Special needs, issues, whatever, aggression, whatever, whatever. And did not, I'm assuming this is accurate reporting, did not impress upon other people in the household that you do not take this dog out on a walk. You do not take this dog to the dog park. You do not touch this dog. You don't walk this dog. I walk this dog. Nobody else walks this dog. Whatever you have to do. Now, all that I just said, if you've got to say that about a dog that you're trying to find a home for, you should go to your vet. You should do a full physical workup, uh, medical workup, blood work, um, maybe some x-rays, see what's going on with the dog. Maybe the dog needs medication. Maybe they have a thyroid problem. It could be dietary. They could have an injury. You don't know what dogs have been through, you know, when when we find them uh, sometimes, whether it's on the street or an owner surrender, let's do the medical workup and talk to your vet. But in no uncertain terms should a dog like that go out to the general public or even a professional. Like I'm a professional. I'm not going to go a knowingly adopt. Well, I would know anyway, because I would screen the dog before I adopted it. But <clears throat> knowingly get a dog that had aggression problems. No. I lived with a dog that had aggression problems, two different dogs, never had that problem in my life before with all of my other dogs. And I had dog to dog aggression in my household. And I can tell you it's a nightmare and I will never, ever knowingly, because I knew that Rufus had some issues uh, before I got him. I just didn't know how bad they were. Um, and the other dog I knew had issues. I didn't, this was not my dog. This was uh, an ex of mine's dog. And he was actually deemed to be euthanized and she rescued him. Well, let me just tell you what. If a dog is deemed to be euthanized um, for behavior and aggression especially, you really need to take that into consideration and not adopt that dog your love is not going to save that dog. And I know euthanasia is just a crazy hot topic. It is uh, a, an upsetting topic. It is um, triggering topic. It is all the bad things, all the bad things. It sucks. It really sucks. I wish that there were places where you know, there were the perfect homes, you know, where somebody didn't have a dog and they lived on a farm or they don't have any children. They don't go out their home all the time. Nothing. They're an isolated person themselves. And that would be the perfect. <laughs> and maybe the dog has separation anxiety. That would be the perfect home for a dog. But those homes don't really exist very few and far between that you're going to find a home like that so um i know i went off on a on a tangent and you know i always do that's just how i roll on these little side shows um when we're talking about aggression and reactivity and and that type of thing but um there's so many things that could have been done to prevent both of these issues or incidents from happening, you know, um, maybe the dog 
uh, that lived in the neighborhood that got out and made a beeline for a child, maybe that dog should have been euthanized before. Remember, behavior does not happen in a vacuum. And I'll tell you again, it just means that it's not just that one incident. It's not like that dog was like, I'm busted out of the house today. I'm going to run down a block and I'm going to attack this child while he's playing in his front yard on a bike. No. No. There's stuff wrong that was already wrong in that situation. And same thing with the other dog at the dog park. So don't take your dogs to dog parks to socialize them. Go to a trainer, you know, and see. Can we socialize my dog? My dog's three and he kind of doesn't like small dogs. What can I do? Go to a professional and go to a trainer who uses proven methods. Okay. We want, we want things that are based on science that you're not uh, using any force on your dog. It's not necessary. You don't have to touch your dog. You don't have to push your dog. You don't have to flip your dog. You don't have to jerk correct your dog. You don't, you don't have to do any of those things. You want to use what works. And what works is science. Science works. And we know that. And we know that we have proven strategies and methods that have been used over and over again by animal behaviorists, by uh, the top trainers by trainers like me, uh, behavior consultants like me, um, veterinary behaviorists, you know, the professionals who don't want to do any more harm. Our goal is to help these dogs become either just more well adjusted, easier to manage, easier for the human to manage educating the human and what to do, what they can do, what the expectations are, what your expectations should be. Don't take a dog who's got issues to a damn dog park. You're going to screw something up and you're going to get yourself into a situation that you're not going to want to be in. And that could cause so much damage. That dog could have been killed. That woman could have been injured so much more severely. I mean, it was on her face. <sighs> what more can I say? This is what I can say to you. I want you to, I'm going to, there's a fly on my computer and it's been buzzing around and I'm going to kill it. And I'm sorry if you are pissed that I just killed the fly, but I think I missed it. So. Yeah, I missed it. Of course. Anyway, damn fly all day. Um, <clears throat> I want you guys to future proof your puppies. Get your puppies and get them out and get them socialized. If you live in a rural area, go into town, go into, you know, I don't know what you have around you. Um, I don't know. Say you have a I don't know, VA center, whatever, go into the stores with your dog, like Home Depot, Lowe's, those type of stores. Don't go into, don't go into a grocery store, you know? Uh, and even if, if you don't live in a rural area, it doesn't matter. You still got to get your puppies out there. You want to socialize them. You want to bring yummy treats with you, get them to work for you, just to sit and watch me, get them focused on you. Start doing your preventative work. Do it up front. You got to do this work up front because if you do it, you well, you can't do it later. I mean, you could teach the management and stuff, but wouldn't it be awesome if you got your dog as a puppy and you did the work on the front end? I know all of you don't have, uh, you all of you who own reactive dogs are not, you know, we're not there when they were puppies. I, I get that. I understand that. I can relate to that because I got Rufus pretty much past his, really his social window was pretty much closed. Okay. Cause he was five months, five and a half months when I adopted him. Um, but my point to you is, is that I don't want you to make the same mistakes that other people make, or even mistakes that I made with Rufus. Um, 
Am I a professional? Yes. However, there were a series of events that happened in my life that I didn't prepare for, that I really wish I did prepare for. Um, and I think that made Rufus's anxiety worse. I really do. Um, and I mean, how could it not have made his anxiety worse? A uh, little man went through shit and, you know, we went through stuff together. Um, but I didn't prepare him for that. <laughs> I didn't prepare myself for that. Um, and that's what I mean. Like, sometimes things just happen, you know, and, and for all the things that happened to me and to Rufus, um, we damn well came out really good. We really did, you know, and, and, um, I wish he was still here. I really do. Um, but you know, he was, he was sick and, um, he passed away a few years ago and I miss that little man. I really, I mean, he was my heart and soul and he taught me so much and I just want to pass all this knowledge on to you guys. Um, this is all the stuff I talk about. I I didn't make any of this up. I didn't discover it. You know, I, again, I'm telling you things that were taught to me by amazing, intelligent, just phenomenal scientists that are out there you know we're talking karen Pryor, we're talking dr ian dunbar we're talking you know i mean patricia mcconnell we're just endless endless the bellies more and more and more got puppies moving around in the background getting up from an afternoon nap um but anyway thanks for tuning in please like share and subscribe I know I kind of yammered on a little bit. Um, let me know what your thoughts are about this. And um, yeah, I'm I'm just um, excited to hear some feedback. And I will totally let you guys know what, um, you know, what updates I find. And when I get that report from Pasco uh, Sheriff County, I will let you know. All right. Thanks, guys.